As we celebrate Columbia Pike's 200 years, we welcome the birth of a new shop on the Pike, which is already very popular, Twisted Vines Bottle Shop and Bistro, where you can sit back and enjoy a glass of wine in a relaxed atmosphere. Its quaint and elegant setting is perfect for any type of tasting, from bold reds to subtle whites, and you can enjoy a bite to eat. My palate is ready to start tasting. So how did the idea of Twisted Vines come about? It was kind of a, a passion of my husband and I. We um, went to Argentina and Chile for six months. We lived down there, just took a sabbatical. Uh, while we were there, we realized we were going from vineyard to vineyard and learning more and more about the culture and the wines down there. And we kind of noticed that we did the same things every time we went to Italy or went to France. We were always focused on, you know, which vineyards did we go to. We were like, you know what? This is the kind of feeling we want to bring back to our community. And we just saw what was happening on Columbia Pike and felt like this was something the community would really want, so we uh, decided to take a chance and went for it. Now you live on the Pike, is that why you opened here on the Pike? Absolutely. Um, we love Columbia Pike, we love seeing it's changing, and we love the communities that are around here. We found this space and it was just the perfect size and the perfect location of being right on Columbia Pike. And what have you heard from your customers so far? I think the biggest thing we've heard from customers is how excited they are to have a place they can come to and, and drink good wine and explore different wines that they haven't heard of before and the opportunity just to walk down the street and you know meet their friends and grab a drink. And Virginia has a lot of its own vineyards. Do you ever feature those? We do. We have, I want to say six or so bottles right now. We're always going to have different ones and just kind of cycle through um, different vineyards in the area. Now what type of food do you serve here? We have um, what we've been calling small plates. Um, we have cheese and charcuterie boards um, as well as some small appetizers, salads. At the table you might get a cheese, a salad, and a couple of small plates and share it amongst everyone. What do you want your customers to take away from here? A feeling that, you know, they have a place they can come to. They can come meet with their friends, have a drink, bring their kids if they want. It's kind of like the hometown neighborhood bar. All right, can you teach me a little bit about wines and the different types that you sure, have here? Absolutely. That'd be great. We're at the wine bar with Sybil. Sybil, what are we tasting first? Two white wines and uh, two red wines. And the first one is an Italian. It's a Grio, and the name of this is Grio Parlante. It has a lot of brightness to it, a lot of fruit. Mmm. My mouth is puckering. Yeah, so it's <laughs> very kind of citrusy. All right, and the next white that I brought out was a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. We're gonna get a lot more of the the grassy, fruit forward, kind of very aromatics. And so by grassy, what does that mean exactly? It's almost like a fresh day in the field, like okay. kind of feeling, you would almost sense it on the nose. Much more fruity, the other one was very crisp and yeah. alive. This is a little bit more of the fruit and a little bit of sweetness. Definitely fruitier and my mouth didn't pucker as much with this one. And cork versus screw top. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in taste? There's not a difference in taste, but screw top is actually the way to go these days. Um, you've probably heard of having a corked wine where you know there can be some sort of damage in the cork or that air in and it just kind of has a musty um, scent to it. Um, with the screw top, you won't get that anymore. Now we're moving on to a red. We are, and I brought two again out. Um, one is from Spain. It's a Monastrel Syrah blend. Um, Monastrel is a powerful grape. Oh, it smells, yeah, powerful. You get a lot of the fruit and the smell. This is nice and soft. Mm -hmm. It's not too overwhelming. Yeah, this is nice and subtle. I like this. Yeah. Next up is the customers of Columbia Pike's favorite. It is a. Zinfandel out of Paso Robles, California. It's got a lot of fruit, got some great spice. Uh, it's, it's a different a color than the last red. Definitely, it's gonna be a little bit deeper mm -hmm. color. That's a good one. It's very um, smooth tasting, it goes down easily. Exactly. So when are your tastings? We do uh, wine tastings every Saturday and Sunday from two to four. We also do, um, on Tuesday nights, we're starting to promote our family night um, with it so many people in this area with kids, they always feel a little uncomfortable walking in here with a stroller, like, can we come in here? Right. So um, we fill the front up with toys and have all the kids just playing. It's uh, kids eat free. Parents get to sit, talk, and have a glass of wine. So um, trying to really make it a community place. 
Well, thank you for the tasty. Can welcome. we head downstairs now to see what Caroline's cooking up? Absolutely, let's Great. do it. Okay, we're in the kitchen with Caroline, the Hi. chef here. We're gonna start with a cheese platter. So I select four cheeses for you, all Italians. And also we're gonna have a strawberry and beet salad. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you'll like it. Do you know anything about cheese a little bit? Or? I know I like it. <laughs> That's enough. And I like to eat it. All right. So we get a little bowl. The first cheese we're gonna have um, Uboyaco, which is uh, Italian. Uboyaco means um, drunken, which basically is they Perfect leave the wine. cheese um, in red wine for a long time, aged in red wine. That's why you have that little dark skin. This looks like a creamier cheese. Yes, this is the Fontina cheese. Okay. What do you like? How do you like your cheese? I I like everything. I like creamy cheeses a lot. What about blue cheese? I love blue cheese. I mean, there isn't a cheese that I've tried that I don't like. However, I've never tried the cheese that smells like a dirty foot. <laughs> I've never tried that, but based on the smell. But I would probably like it too. So here we have um, Caligio, same thing, Italian. So the last one, we have the Gorgonzola, which is the blue one. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Can you put a little piece of honeycomb there? So this is the cheese plate. So that will be one of the cheese plates. That, gorgonzola, mmm. Creamy, has a nice saltiness to it. It just melted, mmm. And this is the goat cheese, right? I could just eat this. And a glass of wine, that's all you need here. And this is crunchier, nuttier cheese. I mean, I have to try every cheese. Oh, a little honey got on that cheese. Go on. <laughs> I'm listening. I make um, all salads, strawberry and beet salad. It's really refreshing. We also have a little mesclun green mix. And we have a cherry dressing and a raspberry sauce and some pine nuts. So you see we have the beets and the strawberries. It has been staying overnight in the fridge with all sugar. So this way it gets a little softer. Well, it's healthy, it's fresh. So pine nuts, a little raspberry sauce. So here we have a little cherry dressing. Mm, nice and colorful. Yeah. So that will be our salad. Let's dig in, Caroline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lunch time, everyone. You know, I never thought about pairing beets and strawberries together. They go perfectly well together. Absolutely. Delicious. Mm. So we roll. Girl, that is good. We say in French, c'est magnifique. Say many feet. <laughs> Caroline, thank you for You're letting welcome. us in your kitchen today. Thank and you. I will definitely be back, that's All for right. sure. And I'll let you surprise me next time. Oh, let's do this. Bye. Bye, Bye. If you'd like to sample wines from around the globe, learn how to pair wine and food, or just kick back with your friends, visit Twisted Vines. For more information, visit our website at arlingtonva.us backslash ABN and click on Food for Thought. There you can find links to all the places we visited and you can even watch episodes. Cheers to 200 more years of Columbia Pike. See you next time.